Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you all about the Midas DN4888, which is a stage connect device to connect to your Behringer wing. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear, no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, the Midas DN4888 is a brand new stage connect device that Midas has released to work with the Behringer wing. Now, stage connect, if you haven't heard of it, it's the ability of sending 32 channels, either inputs or outputs, or a mixture of the two, down one single XLR cable. Now, it is recommended that it's a data cable or an AES or a DMX style cable because it's all data driven instead of analog. But it allows you to have 32 channels going down that one XLR cable. Now, in our case with this unit, we can have eight outputs and eight inputs additional to what's on your Behringer wing. So let's go ahead and take a look at this unit and I'll tell you about the connections that we have. Starting here on the left-hand side, we have our outputs of the DN4888, and then we have our eight inputs. Now, we can notice that these are combo jacks. So there's TRS on the in inside of this, and then there's XLR. These are all line-level inputs, meaning that you have to have these be a line-level signal. So you wouldn't be able to plug an XLR from a microphone or an instrument directly into these as there's no preamps inside. It's just line-level in and line-level out. Now, flipping over to the back side of this unit, we have our DC input. Now, with that being said, the input on the DC is not required if this is the first device in the chain from the Behringer wing, so that's cool. Um, we have also then have our USB connection, which is used for updating the firmware of the device. We have our ultranet. And then we have our stage connect input and outputs here. So slave is going to be if this is being plugged into the Behringer wing. So we would plug in the female side on the Behringer wing, and then we would plug in our male side into the slave here. We then have our master output, um, which we can continue on the chain to additional stage connect devices using that master. We then have our Stage Connect configuration uh, switch over here. So this can either be the master in the chain, but if you're using it with the Behringer wing, you want this to not be master. You want this to be on 8x8 or 16x8. Now, 8x8 means that there is 8 inputs and 8 outputs. 16x8 means there's 16 inputs and 8 outputs. And the very last thing that we have is our output mode. So individual means that the Individual outputs out of this device are going to be individually selected from the Behringer wing. If this is shared, it's going to be shared across the rest of the devices. Meaning that if this is, has two of these units in one stage connect configuration, one through eight on the outputs would come to the first device, and then nine through 16 would go to the second device. If they are set on shared, then that means that they are going to share one through eight on both of the units. So let's go ahead and actually get this thing connected into the Behringer wing. So sitting on the back side of our Behringer wing, we can see that we have our stage connect here. Now, this is just going to be a single XLR, like I was saying. And when we have that XLR, we can take that and then we can plug that directly into the slave. And once we do that, then this unit will start turning on. Now, over here, we have our stage connect light. Now, if this is red, that means that there is an error in the stage connect configuration. If it's green, then that's good, meaning that it's all working. And then we have our power light over here. Now, like I was saying, there is power that is sent down this cable that goes to this device. If you have multiple devices, it's recommended to use the power supplies that are included with them. And there's a fancy stage connect calculator that you can download from Midas's website for configuring if you need to have multiple power supplies or not. Now that we have the DN4888 plugged into the Stage Connect input on the Behringer wing, let's actually go ahead and get it routed into using my actual channels or outputting to the DN4888. So 
all we have to do is we have to go to routing. And then one thing that I suggest is going to our sources. And then once we do that, we can go into our source group in the upper left-hand corner and go find Stage Connect. Now, what this allows us to do is this allows us to see what devices are on our Stage Connect network. And we can see that we have a single 4888 here. It's a little hard to see, but we can see the inputs on this side and the outputs on this side. And if we had multiple devices, this is where you can do a custom Stage Connect configuration. So we can see that we can just click this and then simply go and select the setup that we want to have. In this case, if I wanted to have two of these DN4888s connected, all I would have to do is go and scroll down to 16 by 16. Now, this should automatically be selected, but my suggestion is to always go in and set up the way that you want to have yours connected. For instance, if we had a 16 input plus this, then we would want to have 24 in and 8 out. Or if we wanted to have just 8 by 8, we can just go and select auto up at the top because this is the only unit that is in this Stage Connect network. So now that we have the Stage Connect configuration set with this DN4888, let's actually go ahead and route those sources to our channels. So let's go ahead and click on channels, and then we are going to go and find our 1 through 40, or our auxiliary channels here. And I'm going to go from my source group and go and select Stage Connect. Now, we can see that I have eight connections here for my inputs. And if you haven't unlocked your routing, go ahead and unlock your routing by pressing that button there. And then we're going to select one, and I'm going to start patching. Now, if you don't have this auto plus one, you will need to go and change every single channel that you want to select the routing on. If you have plus one, it means that it's automatically going to select two when you're routing. Now I have pink noise being inputted into my DN4888, so I can go ahead and just turn this up and we can hear it. Perfect. So that's as easy as it is to get eight inputs coming from the DN4888 into our console. Now what about the outputs? Well, it's actually just as simple. All we have to do is press outputs, and then once we're here, then we can go and select our output group. Now this is going to be our stage connect, so we're going to click our stage connect, and then we can see that we have our outputs here. Now one thing that you will notice here is that we have one through eight, but we also have nine through 24. And that's because the auto configuration ended up setting this up to only have eight inputs and then 24 outputs. However, we don't have any devices on nine through 24 on the output side. So we can go ahead and disregard that that is set like that. So if we were wanting to route any of our outputs from our console to this Stage Connect device, all we would have to do is go and set our outputs here. So we can go ahead and select one, and then we can go to our matrix, and maybe I want to put my main PA on one and two, and then I want to have my stream on three and four, and then on seven and eight, I wanted to have this be one of my mix buses. So we have, there's mix bus one and mix bus two. So now if I was to go ahead and plug my PA into my outputs one and two on the DN4888, then I would go ahead and hear my PA through those outputs. That brings me to the end of this video. If you do happen to have any questions, feel free to comment in the section below. Also, if you have any videos that you are hoping that I would make, Go ahead and drop those in the comment section as well, as I'm always looking through those comments to find videos that are gonna be helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com. Otherwise, thank you so much.